of the first Christmas. We learned from, from Joseph, from the wise men, and I believe uh, from the shepherd. We had five Sundays, if I'm right. And um, from also, listen to this, from the shepherds and um, from King Herod. Gods have been laying on my heart various topics. topics. We look at the three great assurances that Christmas brought to us. Last Sunday, we told us that if you don't have certain three things, you are celebrating Christless Mass. That mm -hmm. is. Christmas without Christ. Or set you call Diani Cab and you come at your she boogie. Otomans be and shake a city going to Christine, you know. Today, God has laid on my heart to talk on this topic. You know, a lot of people so unlock and lots so Luria Corrie. What if there's no Christmas? To buy the Becos Keresin Cop. What if there is no Christmas? To the In other words, words, what if Jesus was never born? Think about that. What will be? Or or will will be? be? So I will talk of, well, I talk of what will be, but mostly of what will not be. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, Luke chapter 2, I was going to read from Matthew, then I switched to Luke, which we read last week. Uh, like I said, it's more of topical. But then I'm still going to pick from the verses for my outline. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. And then we'll quickly read Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. Luke, Stand up let's and let's read the SNK word of God together. Stand up and let's read the word of God together. I will read verse 8, you will read 9, so we are going to read responsibly. The Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9 together. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. We're not reading well together, so let's take note of that. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill towards men. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and verse 7. Okay, we're Isaiah, going to read these two verses together. Let's read excitedly. Um, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah, we can Are you ready? Okay, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forevermore. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, that he will be born, that the Savior will be born. And thank God he was born. Father, bless your word to us. Amen. Speak your word to us. Amen. Feed us your word. Amen. To grow us in you. Amen. Give me liberty. Give me clarity. Amen. To deliver your word. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated, please. Ejoku. 
sometimes ago, few years ago, I preached a message from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Which I tied to probably one of these days. If I still find it, I think it's somewhere. We should use it in the magazine. I think I'll probably we've used it. Uh, what if there was no resurrection? What if there was no resurrection? And there, I did my best to let us see the great loss and emptiness of our faith if there is no resurrection. So today, I want to go further to the birth of Jesus Christ. Because it is in sequence. Without the birth, there will not have been the death. Then there will not have been the resurrection. And there will not be glorification. There will not be home for us in heaven. Because the gospel is so whole package. It is the birth, the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So today, I want us to look at the beginning, at the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And see what will be missing. Had it been there is no Christmas as we celebrate today. What would be missing? Had it been that Jesus was never born? Like I said last Sunday, there is a great push in our world today to try and remove from the hearts and minds of every soul the bed or anything that has to do with Jesus Christ. The world is fighting to make sure that we remove Jesus Jesus Christ in every area of life. But some of the biggest cities in our world today, especially in America and in Europe, they only greet each other happy holiday. They have fought for many countries. They have fought successfully to remove Jesus Christ out of schools. Out of hospitals. I read somewhere this week that another group, a testy group, are fighting that people who put Christmas wreath on the uh, uh uh to decorate the grave of the soldiers fallen soldiers they said it is not constitution I want it is against the separation of state and i want to tell you don't jack that way i want to want to feel i will not just see be both because those graveyards those cemeteries were national uh property they were government property the world is fighting to remove jesus but it's not really the world it is the god of this world satan himself he's fighting to make sure that jesus is removed from every consciousness of this world and by the way he has always been fighting so we have major departmental stores and uh, 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 supermarkets throughout the land, even now in Nigeria. <inaudible> the name Christ has been removed out of the word Christmas. <inaudible> and like I said last Sunday, <inaudible> the only <inaudible> <say Sunday>, Xmas. <inaudible> Hello, if you are here this morning <inaudible> and you claim to know the Bible, <inaudible> and you know, say you are a fundamentalist this <inaudible> morning, <inaudible> a Bible believer this <inaudible> morning, <inaudible> and you still greet someone Sorry for you. Sorry for you. That's what we look at. This Merry Christmas is correct. Merry Xmas, very wrong. And I told you that some are pushing to this. No, it's still a Christmas. Because the word X is the first two letters of the word Christ in Greek. Christos. And he's spelling X, you know, more, not even more like X. And when you're like this, this. But it's yeah, okay. The, X, the loop is completed. Oh, so they pack Christian. X, stos. Uh, but I said we are not speaking Greek. Hello. So if you want to see Greek, you say Mary, Christos. What Mary is in Greek? I don't know what that. So to buy the and let the Greek now we are speaking English. And English. CH is not written in hex. 
Ah, for Christian, it is the subtlety ex- of the devil to remove Christ out of every consciousness. I want to go there. They can't get Satan. He let your Christian grow. And at his birth, at this new time, when we celebrate his birth, his birthday, as it is. The one we are celebrating is being removed from his celebration. From his birth. So the world is doing everything to remove Christ out of his mind. Because of their deep desire to be secular. This humanistic, socialist, God hating people, <laughs> sin loving secularists, uh, secularists, <laughs> would like us to pretend that Jesus was never born. <laughs> but the real force behind this is the devil. It is Satan. <laughs> it is no joke that the devil tried all he could to stop the coming of our Lord Jesus. Christ. Like the movie. Titled How Grinch Stole Christmas. Grinch, by the way, in dictionary meaning, means a mean spirited person who spoiled the enjoyment of others. A killjoy, that's what the dictionary definition says. So, Satan is the Grinch that has tried to steal Christmas, that has tried to stop Christmas oh, God, God, since the beginning. And I submit to you today that he is continuing in trying to steal the true Christmas of at the true meaning of Christmas even today. Even up to today. At the beginning, since the first promise of the seed of the woman in the Garden of Eden in Genesis, when the promise of the seed of the woman was given by God that the, of the coming Messiah. The devil made, has made every effort to stop Jesus' birth. He tried to destroy that promise through Adam. Went through Sarah to say, oh, maybe if you give birth, uh, you marry my servant, my slave, Agar. The promise of God will be fulfilled. But God rejected us. God said, no, 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 that's my, my promise. Today, Ismael is not the child of promise. I think he's the child of promise. And it is through that name that our Savior, Jesus Christ, was born. You know, today, even from the other side, the other religion, they are now writing their play, they are writing their movie to set Top is my hair. The promised child. No, it is the green. It is hard to steal Christmas. I remember not long ago when I was growing up that even the Muslims they said it was Isiaka. I remember they had the place. But the devil said, no, 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 no. Ah, you are, you are, you are su- submitting to the fact that Jesus is free. Say, it's Ismael. The Grinch, the devil, we never stop to steal Christmas. To destroy the meaning of it. What if there is no Christmas? If what if Christ was never born? So he tried from the seed of the woman. He tried through Abraham. When eventually not to spend too much time. He, 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 the time came that Jesus was born. Now it is the time for Jesus to come into the world. And it is like the devil went into overdrive. It's like the devil went into overdrive. He made sure that an edit came out for Joseph and Mary to travel that rugged, notorious, dangerous journey. Remember, it was not the jet A, no airplane, no good car, no coropay. No, not even Okada. No keke na pep. 
The closest was donkey. The donkey. The donkey. The donkey. The they traveled that long. I believe the devil was trying to cause miscarriage or delivery complications. Okay. okay, then they arrived in Bethlehem. And there was no place in the hymn for him. And the only God, the manger. You know, sometimes when we look at the modern play, Brother Joseph Popola, not Pastor Joseph Popola, when you guys in your department of art and music and play and so on and joshua you see the play you see the movie then we start off manger that is pristine that is neat amen i'll be back on it hello the manger is always filthy dirty oh dirty as my room in medical time, it is the worst place to have such medical procedure of childbirth <inaudible> or medical process. Because the medical process. Risk of infection. Sometimes you don't think deep into that. That how the all effort, the very effort of the devil to make sure that there is no Christmas. <inaudible> And I submit to you, some of you too don't know the devil is never resting. We never rest. We never want the purpose of God for your life to be revealed. I mean, to be realized, to be fulfilled. The Bible says we, 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 we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy of devil. But many of us are ignorant of it. Therefore, so we should not give the devil any chance, lest he takes advantage of us. He is the Grinch that will always steal the joy of the Lord from your life. So the devil tried to steal Christmas. I can tell you why Mary was uh, 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 laboring. Oh, have you ever seen a laboring woman that is quiet? I remember when I was laboring for our first daughter. Okay, that's an heresy. My wife was laboring. So uh, I don't yeah, believe in two Robbie. spirit, binary person, or transgender. Those are of the devil. But when I was, was laboring inside and I was laboring outside. So, Rasha Balaji, you are what? I bet you live on Grandma Mama Yawa. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But, what, but in the physical pain, when women were laboring, but it is not a, 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 a nice sight to see, right? Now, we heard of women that will be cursing their husband. When some women hold some hands, the, the bone will break. Imagine those animals maintaining their own life. JJ. And then told on the husband. I tell you, the animals will go crazy. Sometimes we don't really, we, the devil will want us to lose all those pictures, all these pictures. He, he tried all he could to make the part of our, Jesus, of our Savior to be a failure. Not to be their life. Not to be a failure. Then he was born. You will think the devil will say, well, I've been defeated. But the devil did not stop. It is not try to stop that Christmas. To get rid of the baby. And we read in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. That now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Herod the great, that awful tyrant. Head of the birth of the king, of the king, the wise men came seeking the king. They come seeking the king, seeking Christ. And by the way, wise men, wise people still seek Jesus today. And naturally, 
they had to go to the local leader, thinking, you know, they didn't know the scripture well. Probably they thought it would be from the royal knowledge. Amen. Amen. So they went to the palace and they got before Herod and said, Oh, we are here, the new king, the oh, one that we are. And Herod was mad. You know what Herod do? And he hated. And they consulted. And people who knew the prophecy but did not appropriate the prophecy. Like many of you, you know the word of God, but you never ever appropriate the word of God into your life. It is the Grinch, the Grinch devil that is stealing the joy of the Lord from your life. When they were appointed to Bethlehem, and Herod told them to return and bring him the new, so that he can go and worship the king. Right? No, he was lying. Mm -hmm. Later, we found out that the wise men were warned of God to return home another route. When Herod saw that he was lied to, the Bible says he was mad. He was mad. He was crazy. He became crazy. And he ordered a genocide. Any child, two years and under. Looking at the timeline that the, the, the wise men said they saw the star, so he said, kill all of them. Imagine if God had been su successful and Jesus was killed. Oh, glory to God. That the devil could not steal Christmas. So what if the Grinch, Satan, had succeeded? If Christmas was never Christmas, if it has never been, never was, if Jesus was never born, if there was no Christmas, and there is no Christmas as the then what will happen? Number one, if Jesus was never born, if there is no Christmas, there will be no redemption. There will be no redemption. If Jesus had not been born into this world, he would not, be, he would not have been able to die for all. In John chapter 2, 12, verse 23, he said, the Bible says in John chapter 12, verse 23, that Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. He was talking about his death. The work of salvation. In verse 27, Jesus said, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. That was still the devil in the garden of Gethsemane. Fighting to make sure he did not die. He rejected the, 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 the will of God. But Jesus said, But for this cause come I unto this hour. God required a sinless person to die, to rescue the human world from the penalty of our sin. We are all sinners. The Bible says, For we have seen, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus was the only sinless person born of the Virgin Mary. And he was the only one that can ever satisfy the standard of God. Jesus became a man so that he could die for all. And that is what he told his disciples and he's telling us and if Jesus had not been born every man and woman will remain in their sin, sin and we will spend our eternity in separation from God in punishment in hellfire we will spend our eternity in the lake of fire according to Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to 15 God warned us that every man and woman has already been judged the Bible says we have seen and we have already come short of the glory of God we cannot attain to the glory of God we cannot go to heaven and the escape from eternal punishment or course 
when Jesus came to do the work of salvation. And it is appropriate in our life when we ask Jesus to save our souls, to forgive our sins. That is what the Bible is saying. And if Jesus had not been born, he would not have died in our place. There will not be resurrection. The apostle told us, tells us that if Christ had never been resurrected, then we are still in our sins, and that means we are in real trouble. We are on way to hell. He even told us the definition of gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. But he said it in verse 3 For I deliver unto you first of all, which I also did see, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 3. Be Christy to go Nitoria Shewa, Gagai be with And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. As he pay as he poor, as he goes There will not have been his death. If he had not been born, if nobody is born, you can't die. I'm not going to die one day because I was born into this world. But the saddest part will have been I will have experienced the second death in air fire forever. But Jesus came to destroy the work of the enemy, to destroy the work of Satan, to redeem our soul, to save us from our sin, and to give us life eternal, and glory to God that Christ was born, Jesus was born, and therefore the work of salvation was done. Praise God for the birth of his son that brought salvation to us. If Christ had not been born, if Jesus was never born, if there is no Christmas, there will be no redemption. You will still be in your sin. You will still be in your sin on your way to hell fire. I will still be in my son on my way to hell fire. But glory to God for Christmas. Glory to God that Christ was born. Christ is born. Hallelujah. There is redemption. Secondly, if there is no Christmas, if Jesus was never born, there will not be there will be no revolution. Okay? Revolution. Wow. I was struggling to change this word. But the word is very compound. I took time to study the dictionary. There will not be Yipada. Could you see Yipada? I will draw. Could you see Yipada? I will draw. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the birth of Jesus Christ is the most revolutionary event right. of all generations of any generation. In fact, in, fact, in fact, I don't care about Ijira you celebrate today. Worldwide, we only, we, only, we only look at history and we look at calendar through before Christ and after his death. Jesus, listen, listen to me. Jesus is the prime water, the private figure. Christy on Gangani on Joe Lan, after his death. Lay Christy, everything is calculated in Christ. Every calendar is celebrated, is recognized, is implemented in the reference of his coming. Hallelujah, somebody. Look at Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. I said suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, look at that verse 14, very yeah, well. Say, Kenny, nah? Glory to God. Look you. And peace on earth. It is yeah. Jesus who brought peace to this world. He is the prince of peace. 
He is the revolutionary figure. Oh, no, 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 no. Look at the last phrase. Say, good will towards men. Good wills towards men. See, Christ's birth brought God's good will towards us. Change our life. Change history. Change society. Change culture. Brings revolution. Before Jesus was born, the value of human life was much less. God prophesizing about the birth of his son in Isaiah 9, we read. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Lord, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. To order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forevermore. Amen. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Let me tell you, for years, the ungodly have been making the argument that what can hold a moral standard without a void of the teachings of Jesus and the Bible. Let me say that again. Go on. Money is when you there has always been darkness before Christ entered any particular society. You see, Jesus that brings revolution to life. To In fact, much of what we see is the malicious attack from the Grinch called Satan. Still, continue to rob people of Christmas, of the joy of the Lord, of the blessing that redemption in Christ brings to life, to this society, to community. They try to read Christ from the lives of society. In reality, the teaching of Jesus have changed the value of life more than any other in history. Has changed the value of life. Did you know that before Jesus Christ entered the picture, that things were war, far worse in our world concerning the value of life? You see some people trying to go to, back to traditionalism, saying, like Mount Zion film, that film, very good film, like Strange religion. Mean Christianity. No. I'm saying that Christianity is a strange religion. So that we go back to our traditional worship. I wrote an article recently for my friend, a doctorate, a doctorate dissertation, or what doctorate, I don't know what, how you put that, but it's dissertation for his doctorate. And uh, the surgeons of traditional religion, African traditional religion, ATR. It's called yes. effect and how to successfully evangelize the adherent. From my readings and research, I found out that, listen to this, there is a growth, resurgence of traditional worship, of idolatry. And that's still the devil. Walking. And he will continue to walk. Until he then come in her fire that, that as God put it in the book of Revelation. So, people try to say our value was better before Christ. But they knew it's a lie. Let me give you about four things that the value has changed, has improved because of the revolution that Jesus Christ brought. We see improvements in, number one, the value of a child because of the birth of Jesus. Because Jesus you know, did you know that in the ancient world, 
sacrifice of children was common. It was a dangerous time to be a child then. In fact, before the Jews entered the promised land, God warned them in the Bible that they should not be like the people of the land of Canaan. In the land of Canaan today, the unhurt archaeologists have unhurt a lot of graves of children sacrificed to their God. To their the archaeologists who excavated the ruin of Astore, the wife of the god Baal, found during the times of Ahab that people sacrificed thousands of babies as indicated by their born skeleton. Do you know that that was not only limited to the Middle East? In fact, it was a worldwide phenomenon, a worldwide catastrophe. Here in Africa, we all know the story. We heard the story of Mary Slessor. Before Christ, eh? Before the light of the gospel of our Lord Jesus came, before he brought that revolution to our society, that peace, his government of peace, his government of joy, glory to God. If there's no Christmas, there's no revolution of life, the implement of battle of life. They will take twins, innocent babies, and go and throw them into the bush because they are born twice. And they are born twins because they are two born at the same time. Sherry, again, switch to Esso Ebo. Today I want to move online because of people online. But let me switch to Yoruba. Let me be conscious of that. Share more with me. Do you know before the gospel came to the world, or in any society, or in any environment, there has always been darkness? Sacrifices here and there. Using baby to make sacrifices, even human, human sacrifice. I don't want to jump because I still put it from the value of life as a child. But Jesus came. We celebrate our babies today. And she your mobility yeah. she you. And by the way, do you still know that there are people today in this world? Yes, you Reverend you Popola, that that they are still not having the glorious light of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ shining in their lives. That are still taking their children to Abba List. Or to religious body churches, seven churches that are more like right? Let me tell you a personal story. My mom does not like me saying it, but God wants me to say it. Are you ready? For the truth of the gospel became real to my parents. Of course, they were religious. They are Christian by religion. Not and there was a church they tried to attend for special prayer. And then whenever I have I'm growing up, by the way, even before that church, whenever I have malaria, I'm very, very pro malaria. Fact, if I see the picture of mosquito in the paper in the book, I will get malaria fever. Okay, that's too much. I mean, that was how. <laughs> that's why I don't like to say. If I oh, that's mosquito, don't let me look at it. But no, I'm delivered in Christ. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But listen, I will get sick. And you know, with malaria comes shortage of blood. Yeah. And with shortage of blood comes uh, conversion. I show. You know, I'm not going to come a bit. And incidentally, they gave a bath between me and my sister of a child that died. So they now gave a bath bath to me. And in Yoruba, culture. 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 
Kokuma. Kokuma. Eh -eh. Duro. Duro simi. Duro jaye. Maloma. Ah, so many kakalon sim. Ile yabo. Keresi. Eh, keresi la wow. <laughs> it's not in the year we are in Christmas. So, and there was that subconsciousness in them. I see, uh, I have some kind of spirit child mentality. And unfortunately for me, uh, unfortunately for me, I will converse. I was conversing till my adulthood. Shortage of blood. And I'm very allergic to a lot of malaria drugs. That's another problem. I remember one that I remember I said that I was in the morning. I was out in our civilian barra growing up in Ibada. As I was trying to urinate. And I started conversing. And the old man, one of the men in the house, close by. And I hey, go my law. Ah, bere what? I'm, uh, my grandfather, I remember before he came to know Jesus, he will give us bere. And then what became of Sefer Yinari? He just was told then. Ah, and then whoa. Before the true gospel came. I said, whoa. Ah. I said, whoa. Pastor Popo Allah, I said, whoa. Hallelujah. Ah. And you are just looking. Amen. Remember when I had injury in my leg and so from football? My grandfather would put the blade, chew, 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 chew. I'm in love with him. I would do something like, uh, sometimes in the head. My, father, my grandfather was speaking in tongues. Yeah, I heard him. And he wasn't a Christian. He was spoke in those languages. Okay. Glory to God. I'm coming to a point. As a child, they nearly lost me because of ignorance, because the light of the gospel was not really known. Okay. How many children have been lost like that? I'm not still even talking in the light. Of the sacrifice back in the days. Ah, because of the lack of understanding of the gospel of Christ, of the light of Christ. Many are in that ignorance. Alright? My glory to God. Christ improves the value of the life of a child. Is there will be no revolution. Also, Christ improved the value of a woman. Okay. You could not have come and seen then. Right? Right? You could. Tell me of any religion SOS, apart me. from Christ that give women equal value in the house of oh, God to stay together. The, the other religion, they will put the woman's side beside the toilet so that they will enjoy the smell of urine. I want I to know. Walk and walk If there's no Christ, there will be no value for you women here today. No! Okay. Women, a woman of a couple years ago was a second class class. In fact, in some culture, the women were only elevated a little higher than sheep. She was considered property. There could be disposed of at will. That's why I'm sorry for you, men, who still have this notion that I'm a mother, I'm a Aha. 
Amen. Tell me. Yes, of me. Let me mention it. In all this, all religion, all other religion, all so called Christians that are not redemptive, born again, true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that give value to women. Some, some religion even say you can marry so many. In fact, that when you marry many wives, if well, many Abraham made a mistake in that. Abraham, David, the Bible even said he made a mistake in that. David, Solomon, fell from the grace of from, from the favor of God through that. Solomon, right. Women were considered second class. So men, we just go and say to the street and say, go to the I divorce her for no reason. Do you know that during Jesus Christ, you will remember that story? They brought a woman to Jesus, caught in adultery. The question is, where was the man? Over there. Over there. That's what is common even in Yoruba culture before Jesus came. Obirin, you can't sell a ri, ni le wa. Again, fira mi wa su. Jesus lo di akpada. What happened in our whole uh, external family that was a party that we went? Don't sell it, you know, in the whole country, you know. Back in the days before I got married, I think during my own wedding too, the party they did in our house, the same thing always happened. We have one uncle who is very good with meat distribution and soup distribution. He said to one, how can Baba, look at that boy. Oh, 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 me, oh, that. He has the key to the room where the obe is. No, I think you know. I think you know. Say back, honey. I hear you Right. Women had no value. But in Christ Jesus Christ. Oh, oh no, Christy. Because it is Jesus that taught us and established the principle where he elevated the woman as the bone of my bone oh, and the flesh of my bone. It's Jesus who said a husband could not put his wife out in the street because she simply, well, he simply wanted another woman. Matthew 39. Now we as Christians are told in the Bible to lay down our life for the wife. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. And then... That's the revolution that Christ brought. It's Jesus who said we are to treat women as a weaker, precious vessel. So as not to hinder our prayers. First Peter 3 7. Okay. Jesus was not afraid to assist hurting women. I told you of that woman caught in adultery. Reach out to needy women. Matthew Comfort women who are outcast. Luke 7, 44. And John 4. You remember the Samaritan woman? Hey, down. The woman of Samaria. Nobody will talk to her. In fact, the woman went to the well when nobody else would be there because she was an outcast. But Jesus engaged her. But Jesus was so long. But the revolution he brought. He improved 
the value of woman. Improve the value of child. Improve the value. I was going to say this, which is one of our religions, before I go to the next one. Jesus and his followers reach out to honor the widows of the world. 1 Timothy 5.3, Acts 6, James 1.27. Improve the value of those. Okay. The value, uh, the, the, you not only improve the value of a child, of a woman, but also of the head alley. I read somewhere that in the Eskimos, when they grow old, they, uh, they send them away to die in the win winter wilderness. But in the book that Jesus endorses, Leviticus 19.32, the Bible says, Thou shalt rise up before the holy head and Honor the face of the old man. And pray that God, I am the Lord. We are to learn from the example of the elderly. God, Jesus is one that said, you can learn. Titus 2, we can read that. We are to be respectful to the older man and woman as father or mother. First Timothy 5, 1 to 2. God wants us to follow their maturity and experience. First Timothy chapter 2. Jesus taught us to honor our mother and father regardless of their age. Matthew 19, 19. Jesus taught us to take care of elderly parents. Matthew 15, 5. He showed us to reach out to the widows through example of teaching. Actually, the widow is the elderly. No, it's not Christ. Even now, say maybe those Eskimos. Have you not heard in our own culture that an old man will be going out and some young guy will say, go and die at home? Have you not heard it? Yes, it's got it. I whoa. down. Abi, hey, it's got it. Yeah, it's got it. But in Christ, the value of elders greatly improved. Let me give you one more on that. The value of a slave. Do you know that prior to the coming of Christ, most of the world's population were slaves? Under Roman, Roman Empire, don't under the we saw the idea of slavery even brought into Jew, Jewish culture. I learned of a culture, common law of the day, permitted you the right to kill a slave for any reason. But when Pharaoh would die in those days, they would bury slaves. Now, now, I you know, go. If the house owner is murdered, killed, all the slaves, male and female, whether they were outside at that time, they will kill all of them. And somebody may be telling me that where well, those are those culture. Have you not heard of Abobaku in our culture? Who knows what is happening in our town today that they are doing whatever they are doing for our late king? But if not for the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, none of us can gather today when the king is being buried. Because they will kill many people with him to, to be carried to be carrying his load for him on the way to heaven. Is that not what they say? Darkness! But glory be to God for the light of light. Every light is valuable. That fall started in pollution. That master, give unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Is Christ teaching that brother? Ephesians 6 9 says, And you, Master, do the same thing unto them for bearing threatening. 
forbearing trifling, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of person with him. That means that we draw everybody Then Paul said of Holismos to Philemon. In verse 16, Philemon is only has one chapter. Verse 16, Paul said, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother, a brother beloved, brother, a brother beloved, verse 16, especially to me, but now much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. What is he say? Say, Olismos is no longer your slave, he's your brother. In Christ, we are all brothers. We are all servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are all equal before the Lord. There is no big, there is no small. There is no man, there is no woman. There is no Jew, there is no Gentile. There is no free, there is no God. We are all children of the living God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's the revolution he brings. That every life matters. Black lives matter. White lives matter. Children lives matter. Women's lives matter. All life matters. That's Jesus Christ. You are important. You are somebody. You are dead to him. If you are the only sinner in this world, Christ will still have come and die for you. That's how important you are. Just work with one. If there is no Christmas, you know, there will be no redemption. There will be no revolution. Let me give you one more. I was talking to my wife. I said, I hope I will not be long. But we have to give the battle to the word of God. No matter what, there will be no rejoicing. Good Christian man. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. We won't be celebrating. You know one thing? The birth of Jesus Christ as Savior did bring good tidings of great joy. That's what the angel said in Luke chapter 2, verse 10. He said, And the angel of the Lord said unto them, And the angel said unto them, Rather, fear not, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Luke, Ori, Kejesai, Kewa. Good tidings. Of what? Of what? We shall be to all people. Unto you. What is that rejoicing? That of great joy. That unto us is born this day in the city of David, the Savior. Which is Christ the Lord. We rejoice today. We can join the Lord today. Christmas is synonymous to celebration. We all know worldwide. Now they are doing other prophets' uh, birthday now. Sometimes you don't even know it's coming. Because it's not up to 12 calendar months. 12, uh, 12 months calendar year. Eh? I guess the devil has instituted that so that very soon, probably the next generation or few generations, if Christ has not come, they will say he was born before Christ. It's about nine months they can't for a year or ten months. Uh, I don't take time to study that. It's not worth my time. But I know it's shorter than 12 months. But listen. Whenever Christmas is coming, everything changes. Or everything changes. Uh, the weather will change. So we enjoy our matan. Music in the air. Just 
Christmas comes with merriment, yeah. with singing, yeah. with, joy. with yeah. celebration, yeah. with sharing, yeah. with joy. Yeah. If Christ was never born, we have Christmas celebration. Yeah. In Luke 13, he said, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of every was praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. We rejoice for that. And yo, but listen, uh, over the years, Christmas has developed from a simple recognition of the birth of Jesus to what is called mega commercialized event. And the devil has come subtly to destroy Christmas with that commercialization. But we celebrate here because we keep trying get, to get back to the original intent of this season. We keep the reason of the season, which is Jesus Christ. So Christmas is the time of family time, a joyous time, a time of memories, fantasies, giving, visiting, singular. Yet, if no Christmas, none of this will be, okay? But let me move forward and tell you that be what with all these festivities and celebrations, the greatest joy that Christmas brings is the joy of our salvation. We rejoice that we are saved today. We rejoice that we have the life of God in us. We rejoice that today we are children of God. We rejoice because heaven is our home. Jesus said, Jesus said to his disciples, when they came excited about things that happened. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse 20, yes, Jesus said, no, we stand in this rejoice. Not that the spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name are written in heaven. Only I I'm rejoice on that. Without Jesus, there will be no rejoicing. There will be no rejoicing. Jesus also speaking in Luke chapter 5, 15 verse 7, says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 90 and nine just persons which know no repentance. The Bible even says that in the book of Luke, if we look at it very well, that Suddenly, there appear angel, multitude, hosting, praising God for the birth of the Savior. His birth has always come with rejoicing. And the greatest rejoicing is the rejoicing of our salvation. It's the joy of our salvation. Joy of our salvation. Glory to God. So yes, we rejoice in the birth of our Savior. For the salvation he brought to us and, and for our eternal, eternal home in heaven. And we will sing. And that's why we sing rather. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. Give me the verse one. Say, Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercies and his reign. Be prepared for us a play when we all. Sound up with me this morning and rejoice in the Lord for Christmas. For the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, that has flowed, we started the work of salvation, we are going to heaven. We sing, sing that chorus once again. When we all 